Hello! <laughs> uh, this wasn't a video I was ever planning on making, and I've realized I have set the camera up too low down. Let's try that again. I had no plans of making this video, but then it kind of hit me that for my other series to go ahead, what I watched this month, which is completely spoiler free, I couldn't, I couldn't contain myself. I had to make a video where I completely spoiled the shit out of this movie. It's so massive in pop culture now. It's probably the biggest movie to come out, pro well, probably since Endgame actually, which wasn't even that long ago. But it is huge, and I have a lot to say about it because I grew up a huge Spider Man fan. I watched the animated series, I've seen all the movies many times, and yeah, I didn't know if I was or wasn't gonna spoil the movies I talk about in my end of year top 10 list or however many I choose to do, it probably will be 10 though. So just as a safe bet, just as a point of reference, I figured I'd do a complete and utter spoiler filled review of this movie because I just needed to get that shit out of my system. It's, it's so much to unpack. First of all, I'm just gonna tell you this is the only video I'll ever make where I have no notes. Like even this morning when I woke up, I had no intentions of making this video, I'm just making this completely off the cuff, so it's probably not going to be very long. But here is my review of Spider-Man No Way Home. First of all, I think it is comfortably the darkest Spider-Man has gone, maybe ever? I don't know, uh, the Sam Raimi movies could get quite dark, the Amazing Spider-Man movies I admittedly haven't seen in a couple years, and I do remember they obviously got quite dark with, uh, spoiler alert, you know, Gwen's death, that was pretty dark, but I think as a whole this movie is probably the darkest Spider-Man movie we've ever, we've ever seen, and it's handled really well, Tom Holland is really fucking good in this movie. One of the, one of the big uh, positives about Tom Holland's Spider-Man is that in the previous two movies, he felt like Spider-Man in a sense that he's Peter Parker, the teenager because although I absolutely love him, Tobey Maguire does not look like a high schooler in those movies. Andrew Garfield doesn't look that young in those movies, like he's he's not a teenager. Tom Holland looks like a teenager in these movies because I'm pretty sure he actually was. He definitely was a teenager for Civil War. I don't know about the actual Spider-Man movies. I could be I could be wrong there. But I know he was a teenager for the filming of Civil War. But yeah, we always got this young, novice Spider-Man, so to speak, who uh, always had to look up to people, whether it be Iron Man or the rest of the Avengers, Happy Hogan, his Aunt May. He always had to like look up to people. And now, this is the, uh, the making of Spider-Man, in a sense that he is now going to be a fully-fledged superhero all on his own because, and like I, I've already told you, this is filled with spoilers, if you haven't seen it, just stop watching, please. Aunt May dies. Crazy, I know. The, with great power comes great responsibility line was said, but you didn't think she was going to die at that point, and then when she said it, it's like, oh shit. And then, lo and behold, she dies, and he, he's not left, you know, by himself, he still has uh, MJ, played by Zendaya, who I think has great chemistry on camera with Tom Holland. Wonder where that comes from. And Ned is still great. Always like Ned. It would be so easy for Ned to be a really unlikable, like comic relief, goofy character who ruins the pacing of a movie because that's happened so many times in so many movies where the, the comic relief best friend is normally really unfunny. But no, Ned's great. Ned is very good. And yet again, he's great. Yeah, he's great. Now, uh, the big talking point, obviously, is that... Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield Spider-Man are both in the movie. Holy shit, I lost my mind. It is the only time I've ever been to the cinema, except for two times, which means it's not the only time. But other than Force Awakens, and other than Endgame, this is the only time I've been in a really audible cinema. Like, everyone in the cinema was losing their shit in that scene. And, in fairness, 
everyone in the cinema was laughing out loud at some of the jokes. The comedy between the three is so good because it's the first time they've ever had someone who gets them, who knows what they're going through. Because yeah, Spider-Man, Tom Holland Spider-Man has the Avengers and they're all superheroes, but none of them are fucking teenagers. And although, you know, they're not teenagers, Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire, they were teenagers when they became Spider-Man. So they do know what he's going through. And they both had their um, their trauma with Uncle Ben and, in Andrew Garfield's case, Uncle Ben and Gwen. Which I am so glad they put in the scene where Tom Holland couldn't save MJ and Andrew Garfield Spider-Man does. It was so fucking good. He's such a good actor. He always will be. He's always going to be one of my favourite actors, Andrew Garfield. Hacksaw Ridge and Silence, two of my favourite movies, two of my favourite like drama movies in a long time. He's so good in both of them. He is a great actor. Andrew Garfield, I fucking love that guy. And although he's not on screen for like that long in this movie, I don't actually know the exact runtime of the movie, and I don't know the exact airtime that Andrew Garfield gets, but I know he's not in it for that long. But when he is on screen, he's it's great. They managed to they managed to really balance all three Spider Men. They all they all come across as so different. Like they're Andrew Garfield was a much more scaled down Spider-Man, you know, as he said, he, he fought a Russian guy in a rhinoceros costume, whereas Tom Holland Spider-Man went to space. And then you've got the middle ground of Tobey Maguire, who fought Venom, who, you know, came from outer space. Tobey Maguire, fucking love that guy. I know he's meant to be an absolute menace at poker. Love that guy. Oh, it was, it was when he... Oh, he almost got me, you know, he almost got me because they would have been some of the first movies I ever saw in the cinema, them Spider-Man movies but when he finally put on his suit because when he came through the portal that Ned opened, loved, that was great actually, it's such a random thing but great, when he came through the portal he was in his own clothes and I was like, oh to be honest, they, they fully got me I'm sure everyone else in the cinema was like, oh I'm sure he's wearing it underneath but I don't know, I was just like, oh are they gonna like give Tobey Maguire some like updated spider-man costume no no they busted out the real spider-man costume and it was fucking great i loved it they managed to really get all the villains right all the villains had their own agendas they all had their own reasoning for wanting to get home or not wanting to get home back to their own uh, dim dimension and i think they did a really good job of balancing that that would have been very tricky to balance i'm sure i'm sure in the writing room that was a very difficult task to balance them all. And although, you know, Sandman doesn't get as much dialogue as Green Goblin, you know, why should he? He's Sandman. But they still managed to give Sandman, you know, his... They, they, like, they kept his... They kept his morals from Spider-Man 3, where, you know, he's completely motivated by his daughter. Oh, fucking love this movie. Honestly, I can't wait to see it again, and again, and again, and again. It's my favourite Spider-Man movie. I know, crazy. Uh, in case anyone was wondering, previous to that, it would have been Spider-Man 2, the Tobey Maguire one. I, thi I think this eclipses it, because I've never be I've never been audible in a cinema before, until this. I think this is my favourite Spider-Man movie, and as far as the MCU goes, I'm not, like, a big comic book nerd or anything. I don't have a lot of emotional attachment to many of the MCU characters, but I have a lot of attachment to Spider-Man because I watched his animated series as a kid. Spider-Man and Batman, you know, DC, were the two I grew up with watching on telly. Spider-Man is my favorite hero in the MCU, so this is probably my favorite MCU movie, you know, if not top three. But right now, although I'm probably like still soaked up in all the hype, yes. I think it might be my favorite MCU movie ever. Yes, it lived up to the hype. I said to my girlfriend at the end of the movie, that's the least disappointing movie I've ever seen. Because my expectations were massive heading in. It is the least disappointing movie I've ever seen. Yeah, the end credit scenes were great because something I never thought I'd see, Venom, Tom Hardy, and Danny Rojas, Ted Lasso, in the same scene, in the MCU. Fucking class. Does this mean Danny Rojas quit 
AFC Richmond and became a barman and AFC Richmond are in the MCU? Probably not, but it would be a very great crossover if Ted Lasso and the MCU, you know, combined. I don't know how they would, but it would be great. Yeah, that's going to do it. I am so glad this movie met my expectations. I'm sure there is no structure to this video and I'm sorry about that. It's probably quite a short video. So yeah, I know I said I wasn't going to make another video until my year-end top 10 and maybe bottom five i still don't know if i'm gonna make that you know because although i've seen some shitty movies i've not seen the absolute worst of the worst so i don't know if i'm like qualified to talk about the worst five movies of the year if you're still watching this video by the way thank you because <laughs> you know we need the watch time to go up a little bit on the videos so if you are at this point in the video do me a favor and just comment whether or not you want to see the top five or bottom five worst movies of the year. Thank you. The top 10 best is definitely happening. That'll probably come out start of January because there's still a couple movies I need to tick off the list before I make the video. And yeah, that's 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 about it. See you guys then, I suppose. Uh, Merry Christmas because you won't be seeing me until after Christmas, so Merry Christmas, or whatever it is you celebrate, I don't know, is, is Kwanzaa this time of year, Kwanzaa came up in a game I played last night, so I don't know why I'm talking about Kwanzaa, if anyone who subscribes to me celebrates Kwanzaa, that's fucking class, tell me what Kwanzaa is, <laughs> what am I talking about, right, no, thank you, very much, goodbye, I'm Italian all of a sudden, goodbye.